Hey, OpenXML developers, this is Eric White. Today I am going to do a quick run through of all of the commandlets that are in PowerTools for OpenXML version 3.1. I'll start PowerShell in my normal way where I type PowerShell ISE in the address bar of Windows Explorer. That gives me a PowerShell ISE at whatever location I'm at in Windows Explorer. I've set up this machine to automatically import the OpenXML Power Tools when it starts PowerShell. So we already have them here at our convenience. I have a folder here with a few files. The first command that we're going to discuss today is test open XML valid. This is a commandlet that returns true or false depending on whether the particular document that you pass to it is valid or not. So I can test that on an invalid document and it will certainly tell me that it's false, that it's not valid. If you are writing an open XML generation application, then you very well may want to use this commandlet to make sure that you have a valid document after you're done in the build process of Visual Studio, for instance. You can get help for any of the commandlets that are in PowerTools for open XML. If I tell it I want full help, we'll get more information and we get examples and so on. Once you have determined that there is an error for a particular document, then you also might want to use the get open XML validation error, and this will return a collection of objects that describe the particular validation errors in that document. The next commandlet that we're going to discuss is merge docx. What merge docx does is it makes use of the document builder class in PowerTools for OpenXML. This class enables you to grab bits and pieces of any number of source word processing ML documents, in other words, source docx's and combine them into a new document. The issue is that when we combine portions of multiple documents into a new document, we have to bring along those portions of the related content that are going into the new document, such as images, smart art, comments, and the like. This is the heavy lifting that Document Builder does for us. So merge docx that enables us to combine multiple docx's into a single document. Here we have a couple of documents, input one, input two dot docx. Here I've put together a little PowerShell script. It takes input one and input two and combines them into a new document called out-merge one. And I run it. I had specified to run it in verbose mode so we get this output. And when I run it, I get the merged document as expected. Many OpenXML developers are aware of the flat OPC format. This is where you take an entire docx and you change it to a single XML file. The binary parts are stored in base64 encoded ASCII and the remainder of the XML is just there in plain form, right there in the flat OPC file. This is useful in a number of scenarios. You can write an XSLT transform over flat OPC content really rather easily. So I can convert to flat OPC some file. If I assign it, what we get is an XML document variable, and we can work with this as we would any XML in PowerShell. There are arguments there. Another argument is output format, and I could tell it instead of having an XML document, I could get an X document. So now it's a link to XML X document object. Another useful variety of return from convert to flat OPC is just plain text. And when we look at it, we see the entire flat OPC in text form. One thing that this is useful for is that we can use the select string commandlet to look for particular content. Let's say that I want to look for any line that has RID1 in the entire document. I can convert to flat OPC, 
output that to select string and I'm looking for quote R I D one. And we see that there are two different places where it uses R I D one in the document. Another thing, let's create a new docx. We'll call it with text box and I'll give it the text box argument. Now we can look for that txbx content in this document. So I can run convert to flat OPC passing with text box dot docx. I'll tell it I want to see the text of the flat OPC and I'll select string txbx bx content. I could adjust this like this. I'll create a new script and let's say that I want to look for all of the documents that have a text box in them in this directory. I'll do a where object. So here I have a little PowerShell script that does dir star.docx. It then gets the results of convert to flat OPC outputting as text and then doing select string against txbx content. And then the where object lambda returns result dot count. And this indicates whether this will then filter those docx's so that we see just the list of documents that have a text box. And we see just our document with text box. If I change this, let's look to see all of the documents that have run properties. And we see lots of documents have run properties. And of course, not only can we convert to flat OPC, we can also, once we have a flat OPC document, maybe we transform it using XSLT, maybe we do something else with it, whatever. We can also convert it back to a ordinary OPC document, in other words, to a docx that is actually a zip file. We would use the convert from flat OPC command to do that. Another family of two commandlets are convert to base64 and convert from base64. Convert to base64 takes any file and outputs it as a base64 string. We can also do this with code and as a literal of a variety of different languages. I'll show you very quickly. I can convert that to base64 and I see the base64 string. If I tell it that I want it as a PowerShell literal and let's say I want it with code and I'll output that to the clipboard, then it does its thing. I'll create a new PowerShell script and now in this PowerShell script, I pasted what was in the clipboard and so we can see we set this b64 variable to the base64 string and then it executes the command that convert from base64, storing it as test.docx and passing in the b64 string. If I press F5 and then do a dir, certainly we see that test.docx right here. And it's the same document that we had when we converted it to base64. Next commandlet to show is clear docx tracked revisions. Here I'll copy tracked revision.docx to my tracked.docx. I'll clear docx tracked revision. We can now look at my tracked.docx and we will see that there are no tracked revisions in this document. If we were to look at that document before we ran clear docx tracked revision, we would have seen that there were tracked revisions in that document. There are a number of commandlets that we want to write that are along these lines. This was just the first of the series. I mainly did clear docx tracked revision as a shell or as a proof of concept of how to write this variety of commandlets so that those of you who are helping me to write commandlets can see a good form of exactly how to write a commandlet that can operate on the pipeline, can clear tracked revisions in a specific document and so on. And last and not least, there's also this new docx commandlet and there's a whole variety of types of markup that we can insert. Maybe we want to put a bookmark in there. Oh, I better give it a name. Uh, Eric.docx. And what else do I want to see in there? Maybe I want to see uh, some fonts, different fonts. That's good enough. And now let's look at that document. And sure enough, we can see the bookmark and then we can see a number of different fonts in 
this document. You can find out more about the new docx commandlet in this screencast. It's got some interesting stuff in there to help developers who are working with OpenXML. That's it, short and sweet. I will probably be re-recording this video periodically as I add new commandlets to this new version of PowerTools for OpenXML. Cheers.